Hey everybody, this is Greg Fine, the Code Creative, coming at you today with another fun little tutorial. This one is going to be all about creating a staggered animation effect using a popular modern JavaScript animation library called AnimeJS. And if we look here on the AnimeJS website, we're basically going to be creating this staggered grid animation effect that they have here, which you'll notice if I click on, does this cool staggered rippled kind of effect. So let's see that one more time. Oh, snap. All right, so by the end of this tutorial, you're going to know how to create this. And perhaps this is something you can use on your own website, or you can create a variation on it and use it for your own development portfolio. So let's get going. Woohoo! So to get started, here we are in VS Code. And you can see I've created a folder on my computer called AnimeJS. And I've created my three basic files that I'm going to need for this tutorial, index.html, styles.css, and app.js. And in our index.html file, we just have some basic boilerplate here. On line 8, I'm linking to my style sheet, styles.css. And on line 12, I'm linking to my JavaScript file, app.js. Now, in order to use AnimeJS in our project, there are some different ways that we can install it. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to install it via CDN. So if you want to do the same, you can come to this link, cdnjs.com slash libraries slash animejs. And we're going to be using the current version, which is 3.2.1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get anime.min.js. I'm going to go here and say copy script tag. And then let's come back to VS Code. And now we want to paste it in, but the important thing is that we paste it in before our app.js file. Because whatever code we write in app.js is going to depend on this anime.js library. So let's go ahead and paste in that script tag that we just copied and save our file. And now we should be able to use anime.js. So the first thing I think we should do with our HTML and CSS files is create that grid of boxes like we see on the anime.js site. So let's go back to AnimeJS and take a look at what they have here. So here you can see there's a grid of boxes, and we have 14 columns across, and we have five rows down. We have sort of a greenish color for the boxes and a dark gray color for the body background. So let's go into VS Code and let's create that. So to sort of contain the grid, I'm going to create a div, and I'll actually give it a class of container. And then inside of that container div, I'm going to create a whole bunch of divs, which are going to be the boxes. And I'm going to use some Emmet shortcuts here to create these boxes quickly, because there's going to be a lot of them. So we said each row is going to have 14 columns. So to create the first row, using this Emmet shortcut, I can do dot box, the asterisk, and then the number 14. And then that'll create 14 divs with the class of box. So this right here is going to represent that first row. And we'll just create our example with three rows. So let's copy this first row. And let's paste it. And let's paste it again. And yeah, I know these are a lot of divs here, but these are going to be our three rows. And yeah, even though the example on the website has five rows, I'm just making it three here so we can keep it a little simpler for now. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up my styles.css file. In styles.css, we want to style a couple elements. We want to style that overall container element, and we also want to style the individual boxes. So why don't we go ahead and let's add some styles for the boxes first. So we're going to create a rule for those box elements, and we're going to give each one of them a width of 30 pixels, a height of 30 pixels. We'll give a margin of 2 pixels, just so we can have some separation amongst the boxes, so we can distinguish them. And then for the background color, I have a hex code here, which is the same color used in the example. So let's go to the browser and see what we have so far. And here are all those boxes we just created, but as you can see right now, they're all just in one single long column. So we're going to use that container element and some flexbox to help us create our grid now. So back in VS Code, in styles.css, I'm going to go to do the top of the file, and I'm going to create a rule for that container div. And for this container, I'm going to give it a display of flex. I'm going to set flex wrap to wrap. 
That way, if I create a width on this container box, all of the child items in this container will wrap and create the column row structure that we want. And just so we can place this overall container grid in the middle of the page, let's set margin to, let's do 50 pixels. So it'll come down a little bit from the top of the viewport. And then we'll say auto so that it'll be centered right in the middle of the page. So now let's save and let's go back to the browser. And there's our nice grid here. Now just for fun, let's also set a background color on the body so we can do something similar to the example. And so for the body, we'll give a background color. And again, I have this hex value here, which is kind of a dark gray. And once again, let's go check it out in the browser. And there we go. So now that we've got our basic grid set up, let's actually go ahead and create this staggered animation. So let's once again look at the AnimeJS website and look at their staggered grid. Let's click on it and pay attention to how the animation happens. So notice that there's this staggering effect, but also that each box scales. That is, it expands and it shrinks. And it does so in this staggered kind of way, creating this rippling effect. So with that in mind, let's come into VS Code and let's open our app.js file. And let's use AnimeJS now. So the way that we use it is we're going to call anime as a function. And when we call this function, we pass in a configuration object. And this is where we set up the target of our animation, as well as the various properties and values that we want for the animation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this targets property. And the target of the animation is going to be those divs with the class of box. So actually, let's come to the top of the file. And first, let's select all those divs. We'll create a constant and we'll call it boxes. And we'll say document query selector all because there's multiple boxes. And we're going to query for those elements with the class of box. And so now for the value for our targets property, we can set that to boxes. And actually in our browser, let's switch to our tab for what we're working on. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a property called scale. Remember how I said those boxes were shrinking and expanding? Well, that's what we're going to set up here. So if we set the value of scale to an array, we can set a starting value and an ending value, or a range. And these are going to be entered into our array as objects. So we're going to create two objects. We're going to say we're going to start from a value, a scale value of 0.1, and we're going to end up on a scaling value of 1. So the full scale of the box. Now let's save. And you saw some very brief animation here, almost a little bit too fast. So what we're going to do is actually we're going to set some durations here in our scaling objects. And this is going to determine the amount of time that this scaling is going to occur over. So for example, let's give the first duration 1,000, which is going to be 1,000 milliseconds or one second. And we'll do the same thing for the destination scaling value. We'll give that 1,000 milliseconds as well. And now let's save. And you can see it was a little bit slower. Let's try 3,000 for each. And again, you can see it got a little bit slower. Now, you also might have seen some weird behavior, like some kind of bouncing back behavior. And that has to do with the easing. So by default, AnimeJS has sort of this bounce back effect for the easing. But we're going to counter that, and we're going to set that to linear, just so we can get a clear picture of how this scaling duration is working. So we'll create an easing property, and we'll set that to a string of linear. And we'll do the same thing here. and Set that to linear. And now we should be able to much more easily see how this scaling duration is working. So let's save. And you can see the box is growing for three seconds and then shrinking for three seconds in a very linear kind of way. Another thing we can do is we can set a loop property on this configuration object and set that to true. And that way the shrinking and the expanding will continue in a loop. So let's save and check that out. So 
So you can see that will just repeat infinitely. So that's the first part of setting up our animation. But now we're going to get to the staggered part. Woohoo! So in order to get this animation to stagger, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to set up a property called delay. And for the value of delay, I'm going to call anime.stagger. And this is going to be a function, so I need to invoke it. And what I'm going to pass into stagger as an argument is going to be the number of milliseconds of the stagger effect. So let's say, for example, I pass in the number 100. Well, each box is going to consecutively scale 100 milliseconds after the previous box. So let's save and check this out. Right, so now you can see that they're not all just scaling at the same time, but they're sort of scaling one after the other. As an experiment, let's change this stagger value. Let's say 500 milliseconds. And now you can see that this kind of ripple effect has slowed down. But also notice that the staggering effect is happening one row at a time. And this isn't really the effect that we want. Fortunately, with AnimeJS, we can pass in a second argument here, and that's going to be an object. And what we can do is we can actually tell AnimeJS what kind of grid that we have. So we're going to set up a grid property here, and its value is going to be an array. And the first element in this array is going to be the number of columns that we have in our grid. So in this case, we have 14 columns, and we have three rows. So that's going to be the second element in this array. And before we save and check this out, let's go and change the stagger time to, let's say, 200 milliseconds. And now let's save and let's see the difference in the staggered animation. So now you can see that even though each row is staggered, that is, the boxes in them are staggered, each row is scaling proportionally kind of at the same time. And that's because of this grid value that we passed in here. Now another cool thing that we can do in this object is we can set up a property called from. And its value is going to be a string, and this is going to determine where the staggering originates from. So right now it's originating from the start, or the left side of the columns. But let's say we want it to be center. Now let's save. And you can see the scaling and staggering is originating from the center of the grid. And let's try last. and you can see it originate from the right side of the grid. So these are all different effects that you can try, depending on your taste of what you're going for. For now, let's set this back to center, and we can go ahead and we can experiment a little bit. Let's change some of these durations. Let's shorten this to 500 milliseconds. We'll shorten the second one to 2,000 milliseconds, and now let's save. And you can see a much more rapid rippling effect. And another cool thing we can do is change some of these easing values. And that will have a big effect on the end result. So for this first one, let's say ease out sign. And the second one will say ease in out quad. And let's save and see the difference. So there's many possibilities for this easing effect, and you can find those all online in the documentation.